All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with a big-time update. We're getting away from the quarterbacks today. We're talking about pretty much every position group but quarterbacks today. I'm giving y'all a big final update on all of the top 30 visits that the Washington Commanders had. But even on top of that, I want to dive into some reported interest that the Commanders have in certain players at different position groups that we didn't necessarily have a top 30 visit with. Now, of course, when it comes to the top 30 visits, I'm going to give y'all the breakdown of how many we had and then how many we had at each position. What does that say about our potential draft plans, especially within the first three rounds of the first two days of the draft? And of course, with a lot of the notes and updates that i'm gonna give you today are the washington commanders forecasting their draft plans it even looks like that they may potentially be trying to replace punter tress way we're gonna dive into the guy that they're really keeping an eye on and did a lot of due diligence on throughout this entire draft season that may be our Tressway replacement. I like Tressway, but we're going to dive into some of his stats and also some of the profile of the guy that may replace him. And I also, of course, got to give you a big local pro day update for the local pro day that the commanders had in the DMV area for a lot of those guys. So I'm going to update y'all on everything and more but before we do make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one again we're taking over everywhere so make sure you follow all of the social medias we got the twitter the facebook the instagram the tiktok everything especially the tiktok before it ends up going away and all of that type of stuff make sure you follow me there stay tuned because i'm working on two mock drafts i'm working on a final what would i do mock draft and that one's going to include trades and then i have like a super duper final predictive mock draft for what i think the commanders will do so stay tuned for those more mock drafts i'm also working on putting together a call in live stream for y'all to call in and voice your opinions on what you think will happen and want to happen in the upcoming draft and things like that giving y'all the platform to let y'all voices be heard i have a lot of updates and then i'm also working on a complete predictive video breakdown it you'll see man i just have so much in store for y'all just stay tuned buckle up for this upcoming draft season and of course i will be live streaming rounds one through five that's thursday friday and saturday so make sure you pull up for those live streams i'm gonna be breaking down and analyzing and predicting every pick for every team because i'm a draft guy i'm a commanders fan first but i'm also just a general draft guy that loves this whole process so i will be breaking down everything that's going on throughout the entire draft not just the commanders so stay tuned and and I'm sorry for wasting so much of y'all time. Let's go and get to it. Let's get it. Adam. Adam. All right, so the Washington Commanders finished up their top 30 visit deadline with 25 prospect visits that were confirmed. And as a positional group breakdown, just in case y'all want that, that's seven offensive tackles, four edge rushers, four quarterbacks, four cornerbacks, three tight ends, and three linebackers. Does this reflect the commander's needs going into this draft? Because did you notice that there are no wide receivers, no interior offensive linemen, no safeties, no running backs, nor defensive tackles? I think that's really interesting. This may be a sign of which position groups the commanders will prioritize drafting as high as possible. Like, remember, we have six picks in the top 100 picks of this upcoming draft six picks in the first three rounds i believe we're the only team in the nfl with that many we have one one two seconds and three threes i mean it literally one one two two three three it's actually really crazy how that worked out and i'm not saying that they're going to necessarily ignore those other positions in the draft completely the ones that they don't have in those top 30 visits but after quarterback at second overall they may focus on specifically the guys that we the positions that we brought in for top 30 visits offensive tackle edge rusher cornerback tight end and linebacker in the first two days the first three rounds of this upcoming draft that may be what they key in on to be like all right we need to address these positions within these certain amount of picks and then we can worry about the other positions later on in the later rounds of the draft so that's just my prediction that's just my assumption but i could be completely wrong again the general breakdown and reason that i'm making a lot of these draft videos is for me to give all y'all the information i give you my opinion on it and then y'all walk away with your own conclusions and even when we're talking about things outside of quarterback that 
notion remains the same and also shouts out to the updated confirmed list provided by my dog ken johannison aka burgundy burner on twitter make sure you go follow him everywhere you can and also scott jennings over there at hogs haven they do like a tag team job of updating all of these top 30 visits they also have a list you know how I've been doing like the past few years of updating y'all on everybody that we're potentially attached to and interested in and things like that. They have a running list of like almost 500 people of all of the different position groups every way that we had contact with anybody even if it was something as small as a hula bowl meeting. So make sure you go check that out on Hogshaven and everything like that. But the official top 30 visit list just to run down the list. We have Isaiah Adams, the offensive tackle for Illinois. Eric All, the tight end from Iowa. Karan, still don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I really like him. I think he has a very high ceiling. The tackle from Yale. We have Austin Booker, the edge rusher from Kansas. Jarvis Brownlee Jr., the cornerback from Louisville. Brandon Coleman, the offensive tackle from TCU. Jaden Daniels, quarterback from LSU. Anim Dankwa, offensive tackle from Howard, really interesting. Rod Gaddison, cornerback from Western Carolina. Cam Hart, cornerback from Notre Dame. Jalex Hunt, that's a big name to notice right there. Linebacker from Houston Christian. Even though he's listed as a linebacker, I technically count him as an edge rusher. So if we go back to the count and how I said we had four edge rushers and three linebackers, honestly, we had four. We had five edge rushers and two linebackers, technically, when you really look at the way that, they, that he's projected to play at the NFL level. And we're going to definitely break him down in this video. I have like a mock draft that I'm working on that I have us picking him in. So I'm going to do like a really deep, detailed version of a breakdown for him there. But I want to give you like a quick idea of who Jalex Hunt could potentially be because he's coming from the FCS and he's like the talk of town right now. And I want to give you my basically opinions on why this guy is could potentially make the jump from fcs to the nfl and still ball out very rare not it's not something that happens often but i believe he has it in him then you have javante Jean or john baptiste the edge rusher from notre dame you have elijah jones cornerback from boston college you have marshawn Nealon, the edge rusher from western michigan you have tyrese knight linebacker from utep you have drake may the quarterback from north carolina jj mccarthy the quarterback from michigan and then jordan morgan the offensive tackle from arizona michael Penix jr the quarterback from washington chop robinson maryland's own born and raised edge rusher from penn state roger rosengarten the offensive tackle from washington jatavion sanders the tight end from texas kaden wallace the tackle from penn state trevin wallace the linebacker from kentucky and lastly jared wiley the tight end from tcu those are all of the guys that we brought in for top 30 visits brought them all the way to ashburn had individual meetings with those guys i believe mitch tisler said the way that the meetings were set up is that you got to meet with adam peters by like separately then it was like a trial run you had to meet with adam peters then dan quinn then like your positional coaches depending on what position you are maybe like the defensive coordinator if you're on defense or the offensive coordinator on offense you had like several different meetings for each of these guys when they came in even Mitch Tisler basically brought it up when we were when they were talking about the whole bringing in all of the quarterbacks and prospects at the same time thing even with that visit after we had top golf on Tuesday on Wednesday guys like Jaden Daniels Drake May and all of those other guys had chances to meet with each of those guys individually so um, I, again I feel like that whole Jaden Daniels drama is being blown out of proportion because of the way that they even set up the meetings everybody had a chance to meet with every single person and now let's dive into some of the most notable prospects that have been updated recently that i haven't had the chance to give y'all breakdowns on yet because there's a few guys like jatavion sanders i've already talked about him when it was already announced that we were bringing him in for a top 30 visit same thing with chop robinson same thing with of course like Jaden daniels michael Penix jr drake man all of those guys of course my boy keyron last name still can't pronounce tackle from yale there's a few guys that like a really notable that i've already done breakdowns on jordan morgan the tackle from arizona so I want to give y'all some updates on some of the guys that I haven't had a chance to update y'all on because between being busy and then a lot of these guys that have been updated and confirmed in the top 30 visit list all came in like one wave we were getting like occasional updates here and there like maybe one prospect one day then in five days later or over a week later we get another one and then suddenly after like this whole top golf thing we officially had like a confirmed 10 more guys just th names thrown in there so that's why i'm kind of late we're updating y'all or something so let's first start off with 
big time draft riser, edge rusher, Jalex Hunt out of the FCS, the Houston Christian University. That's the guy again, like I said, I'm gonna do a whole breakdown on them, like a super duper breakdown in my mock draft. But for now, at Next Pro Scouts did a great breakdown of them on Twitter, like an entire essay, like super duper in depth, weaknesses, strengths, everything like that. But as a conclusion summary, real quick, I'll just give you what they said. They said intangibles. Hunt's work ethic and leadership on and off the field have been highly praised. His determination to improve every aspect of his game is evident in his continuous development throughout his collegiate career. Coaches and teammates frequently highlight his positive influence and his role as a motivational force within the team. You already know Dan Quinn is going to fall in love with that. That's the type of player that I have Dan Quinn begging Adam Peters to take this guy, maybe even a round or two sooner than he's supposed to go. I, I mean, if I had to throw a, like a, a bone out there and be like, who's the most random player that you would predict that the commanders are going to somehow find a way to end up drafting? Jalen Sun is probably my pick because it's not even just the intangibles let's get to the bottom line that um next pro scouts had they said Jalex hunt is known for his exceptional pass rush skills solid run defense and impressive athleticism his ability to impact the game on multiple levels makes him an attractive option for some nfl teams looking for a dynamic and powerful defensive lineman hunt's dedication to his craft and his leadership qualities suggests he has the potential to excel in a professional setting and become a valuable asset to any defensive unit and to me personally, to preview one of my final two mock drafts that I'm going to do, I have him comped to Robert Mathis. I'll explain again in great detail in my mock draft that I'm coming out with soon, but just literally think Robert Mathis. And when you're looking at where he's projected to go in the draft, Pro Football Focus has him ranked as the 86th overall player. So somewhere potentially in the third round, ESPN has him 88th, third round as well. The NFL.com has him 127th. So we're looking somewhere between second, maybe, maybe third round, possibly draft buzz 127th as well. And then MDDB has them all the way at 181st. And then the other mock draft databases and websites and analysts and guys like that don't even have them have him on their radar. So um, this is this is really interesting. This is a guy that we may be able to sneak him third highly doubt it maybe fourth round but again we have three third round picks they'll probably end up spending one of them on him even if he's projected to go later in the draft now moving on the washington commanders also hosted tcu tight end jared wiley on a top 30 visit and of course our current depth chart at tight end right now is zach ertz who i mean decent floor but can he stay healthy doesn't provide you much ceiling Pretty good blocker, always going to be open, but doesn't have much yak to him. John Bates, great blocker, arguably one of the best inline blocking tight ends in the NFL. Doesn't offer you much in the passing game, but when you throw it to him, he's quite likely to catch it, but you're not going to get much after that. Cole Turner, I mean, just drastically underutilized last year under Eric Bieniemy. I thought Scott Turner didn't use him enough, and it got worse with Eric Bieniemy. Still don't know how. I think he's so talented. The problem with him is, is that you got to somehow convince Cliff Kingsbury, your offensive coordinator, and whatever quarterback that's coming in, that literally his best trait is that I'm always open. It doesn't matter. I'm not a great separator, I know. But it doesn't matter who's covering me. Just throw it up to me. I'm going to come down with it. He's a great jump ball guy. If there's like the one thing you bet on with Cole Turner, it's that. And I feel like that could be a quarterback's best friend, especially a young quarterback. But a lot of people just play style-wise don't like to throw to those type of guys. They prefer to throw to the guys that are open, that are safer, like the Jahan Dawson, Terry McLaurin route running type of guys. But Cole Turner's a great just throw it up there and watch him come down with the guy, but he's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. I'm hoping whoever we bring in for quarterback and including Cliff Kingsbury as our offensive coordinator, find a way to utilize him. He's too talented not to. And he was even improving as a blocker until last year. We, I mean, he was like a healthy scratch in some games. I'm still confused by that. And then Armani Rogers, y'all already know, man, that's my guy. Um, a lot of people um, give me credit for seeing him and, 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 you know, warning everybody that this guy's extremely talented before we even picked him up as an undrafted free agent. And I, I mean, he had that serious leg injury, but he said in exit interviews at the end of the season after that last game against the Cowboys that he feels like he's back to 100%. He's ready to go. He's a mismatch nightmare. Again, I comp him to Darren Waller if he can just stay healthy and take the time to develop just based off of ceiling and athletic potential and his athletic profile and everything like that. He literally can be like another Darren Waller. So there goes your tight end group right there.
And then maybe you bring in like a Jared Wiley to help with that. Tom Pilicero said that Jared Wiley could potentially be the second tight end off the board. That's really interesting. When you're looking at the breakdown of where everybody has them on their big boards, Yahoo Sports has them 78th. Countdown has them 100th, Pro Football Focus 108th, ESPN 117th, MDDB 135th, Draft Buzz 136th, and NFL.com 185th. I mean, I know it's not a very strong tight end class, but still, a guy at the highest being on somebody's big board is 78th, and he may be the second one to go. It's further proves that there's a dr drastic drop off after you leave Brock Bowers. And then just a quick little summary from draftbuzz.com on them. Jared Wiley enters the NFL draft with a skill set that flashes potential for versatility and impact at the pro level. His frame, catch radius, and ability to snag contested throws position him as a viable red zone threat and mismatch option against smaller DBs in the scene. Wiley's alignment, versatility, and fluidity in space highlight his potential as a chess piece in an offensive coordinator's playbook. However, his tape also reveals areas of growth, particularly in the trenches. His run blocking technique and leverage need fine tuning to hold up against the stout run defenders in the NFL trenches. So that's just a quick summary of a guy that we may potentially target at tight end in this draft, maybe somewhere later, third round, I don't know, maybe later than that. Then also, the Washington Commanders had Rod Gaddison, cornerback from Western Carolina, in for a top 30 visit. And I'm always taking big notice of the guys that are coming from absolutely nowhere, like coming from no-name schools, from the FCS, again, like my boy Jalex Hunt, who I, again, I'm comping him to Robert Mathis. I think he has some shades of Khalil Mack in him. Again, I'll talk about that in my mock draft. Rod Gaddison is another guy because... This is a guy that not any draft big board has him on their list. I have like I'm this guy looks like he may go undrafted according to how people just completely are not even acknowledging existence right now. Uh, and my main takeaway from him is that Adam Peters and his team of scouts are looking everywhere. That's what I love about this. Yeah, Rod Addison, you know, maybe he could potentially be a great player, uh, a sleeper that we could find somewhere. I'm mean, my fault, Rob G Rod Gaddison. Maybe he's a sleeper that we find and maybe he comes in and contributes, but I just love the fact that Adam Peters and his scouts are doing a really good job of looking everywhere, leaving no stone left unturned with a guy like this. I never heard of him until I saw that the Washington Commanders are bringing in for a top 30 visit. I'm not even going to sit here and lie and act like I've been watching what is it western carolina tape like i'm not even gonna sit here and lie and act like that so shouts out to adam peters and those guys for doing their job he's a scout at heart that's how he worked his way up to becoming a general manager and i love the fact that he's still doing that very well also as a team building type of guy where i care more about recruiting and scouting than even just the games themselves i love the art of finding sleepers in the deepest corners in the country so on top of everything else that Adam Peters is already doing very well this offseason, he's also presumably going crazy with the scouting as well. And I love that so much because that's how you have long-term success in the NFL. That's what sets you up to win consistently. And that's how you find guys like George Kittle in the fifth round. It's how you find Fred Warner in the third and so on and so on. I'm Talanoa Hafanga. Like a, I think he was a sixth round pick for the 49ers that Adam Peters got. This is how Adam Peters works his magic, potentially finding guys like this that may even come in as an undrafted free agent and i'm not saying that rod gaddison will end up being another adam peters all pro pro bowl late round still or something like that but again i'm just happy that he's at least trying to recreate that magic that he's had with the 49ers over here with now his commanders this is his first time being a general manager this is his first time literally running the show i like it what i'm seeing so far because you got to remember we are his first baby he was the top football guy for the Broncos and one of the top football guys for the 49ers. And he played big roles in building those teams into Super Bowl winners and in the 49ers case, I guess, Super Bowl goers. Um, but the commanders are his first general manager job where he's having to literally run the show. So I'm telling you, man, I, this is his first baby. If, if you ever doubt if Adam Peters is going to do everything in his power to make sure the commanders are Super Bowl contenders and are just as good, if not better, than how he built the Denver Broncos to win Super Bowl 50 and the 49ers to just go to the Super Bowl just now and to be consistent Super Bowl contenders, trust me, he will. This is his thing. This Again, this is his baby. But now on to the very little that I could dig up on Gaddison just real quick. I mean, six foot. 
even 195 pounds and i mean if you're just looking at the stats nothing too crazy a few tackles here and there and things like that it's not really much to take from him like 2023 alone he had 27 tackles one interception eight passes defense so maybe that's something they're looking for like remember we picked up michael davis in free agency from the chargers and he was known for his great pass defense ability like it just constantly batting down passes rod gaddison was doing that for western carolina so at a really small school though not against great competition and maybe that's just something that dan quinn and joe Wood jr really covet guys that make plays on the ball with good ball skills so maybe that's what he has and now moving on even though we didn't officially have a top 30 visit with this guy specifically i wouldn't be surprised surprise of the commanders targeted tight end Ben Sanat. I know that's a big name out there that a lot of people have their attention on. He's one of my favorite tight ends in this draft. I was I really liked K Stover early on and then I really got in tune with Ben Sanat and Ben Sanat's probably above him in my opinion now. He may be my tight end too. I'm starting to lean that way. Jatavion Sanders looks like a really good receiving tight end but I don't know about him being dual threat and being able to pick up blocking well enough to be considered a dual threat guy. You know I even as great as Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis were, they were just purely receiving tight ends. When they were on the field, teams knew we were not running the ball. So then they just immediately lightened up the box. And even if we did run the ball, the edge rusher would just completely bully them out the way and make the play anyway. So they were literally just unplayable unless we were definitely throwing the ball. Like unless it was just obvious we were throwing the ball, it was almost just pointless to really have those guys on the field. That's what scares me about Jatavion Sanders. I think he can end up being a really good tight end for us, but that does scare me. And then of course, Brock Bauer is a tight end one by far, not even close. I feel like the best player at any position group going from the, the best guy to the second best guy there's no bigger gap than the tight end position in this draft um but i still like ben Sinai. he's starting to really rise for me so again don't be surprised if we target this guy he has a lot of potential he tested way better than i expected off of watching him on tape and we did have a senior bowl meeting with him we met with him at the combine and then also i'm pretty sure we went to the pro day to specifically watch him i'm pretty sure I, i'm i'm very confident in the fact that we went to the kansas state pro day specifically for ben sana and maybe we paid attention to some of the other guys other guys there but i'm pretty sure we flew all the way there in a by plane private plane at that to specifically make sure we looked at and they met with ben sanat at that pro day as well and then also jim Nagy himself said on, on twitter reminder that kent state football tight end ben sanat had the highest vertical 40 inches and longest broad jump 10 feet 6 inches and fastest three cones 6.82 of any tight end at the combine he was literally the best tight end at the combine in all three of those measurements also he had the second best ras 9.72 out of any tight end in the class and again the i mean the only guy that surpassed him was theo johnson he put up a historical combine performance not bad for a former walk-on let's also note that you know dan quinn and those guys love a, a, a walk-on story a guy that's not supposed to make it remember austin eckler and frankie louvu went undrafted and worked their way up to becoming these great players and so i'm pretty sure adam peters and those guys are going to take note of that as well that's probably just like an extra little bit of plus to him the fact that he was a former walk-on and worked his way up and also jim Nagy said don't be shocked if sanat sneaks into day two do not be surprised if he ends up going second or third round and if there were a team that may take a chance on him it's probably us in that third round so he sounds just like another tight end to me that adam peters drafted george kittle when we're talking about athletic profile i'm not saying he's literally going to be george kittle but athletic profile measurements and everything like that remember george kittle went in the fifth round y'all people are thinking ben sanat may go in the third at latest fourth so coming out of the draft, coming out of college, people are higher on Ben Sanat than they even are on George Kittle. So don't be surprised if we try to find a way to get him. Now, if you're looking at where he may potentially get drafted, CBS has him ranked 46. That's the highest by far because then you have Fox with 59. And then it's a huge drop off. Pro Football Network, 81. ESPN, 94. NBC, 97. Yahoo Sports, 100. Draft Buzz, 101. MDDB, 101. Pro Football Focus, 105. And NFL.com. 129 so it looks like generally everybody's basically in, in, in the majority of people are seeing them as like a third maybe a fourth round pick right now 
And then also moving on, according to a pair of sources, shouts out to my boy Ken Johannesson for tweeting this, the Commanders have significant interest in Michigan wide receiver Roman Wilson. I think that's big news. Because first of all, we didn't have a top 30 visit with him. So that's just really interesting that we're, I don't know where these sources are coming from exactly, but apparently we really love ourselves some Roman Wilson. I personally think he's crazy underrated. He's literally only flying under the radar right now and not being talked about way more just simply because this is arguably the best and deepest wide receiver draft class we've seen in years. And when Kay Adams asked Trevor Sykema on her show what separates Roman Wilson from other wideouts in this draft class, he answered, quote, this dude will block his butt off, unquote. And on top of already being a deadly wide receiver threat, I mean, maybe I can do an entire breakdown on him if we end up drafting him then after the draft and we've officially taken him. Then I'll talk about his weaknesses and strengths, what he's great at, route tree, hands, does he attack the ball, all of that type of stuff. We can save that for another day if we end up getting him. We'll cross the road when we get there. But the fact that he's arguably the best blocking wide receiver in this class is very notable. Because imagine having a wide receiver group of guys that all block well. Terry McLaurin was known for his blocking coming out of college before we even knew he was who he was. Jahan Dotson even had shows some flashes every now and then of doing some pretty good blocks on some running plays. So you know how unfair that will be to have all of these really good blocking wide receivers whenever a mobile quarterback Whoever we end up taking second overall, because again, Drake May's athleticism is very underrated. Whenever one of those guys, whoever we end up taking, takes off and runs, that blocking down the field by wide receivers is the difference between an 8-yard run and a 30-plus yard run. Not only just from the quarterbacks, but the running backs as well. So I think that's a trait that we definitely need to covet, and I'm pretty sure that's what Adam Peters has in mind while showing apparently there's some strong interest there. Now, when you're talking about where he may potentially go in the draft, some people at DraftWire think he can go as early as the first round. They have him 29th on their big board. DraftNet has him 39th, Pro Football Focus 42nd, Draft Buzz 43rd. And then well, I'm not going to read off everybody's names, but just know 48th, 49th, 55th, 65th, 71st, and 72nd. So basically people see him at worst as like a very late second round pick, very early third round pick at worst. So he's definitely going to be like a second or third round target if the information is true about us being very interested in him. Even though third round doesn't seem very likely because we do have three picks in the third round and our first one is very early in the third round, but you're probably going to have to take him with that first third round pick if you want to get him. But honestly, if you really like him, if we really, really do like him, you're probably going to have to take him in the second. Even though wide receiver isn't one of our biggest needs but it is an underrated need that people aren't talking about enough i do feel like we need wide receiver but is it worth taking in the second round when we have other bigger needs out there really interesting and then now moving on just to let you know the commanders had their local pro day in ashburn all the way back so this is reported april 9th i believe it was like april 8th and i don't know i've just been so busy i've been all over the place but i don't know just to let you know there were a lot of notable names at that pro day you have cornerback beanie bishop from west virginia you had cornerback josh wallace from michigan and of course these are this is a local pro day so these guys are from the area that's why i already did like a whole breakdown explaining how this works in another video but basically when it comes to a local pro day you're allowed to have guys that even if they went to another college like one of these guys went to alabama but he's from maryland so he can participate in that local pro day and it definitely and it technically doesn't count towards the commander's top 30 visits because they technically live there i guess they say they say they're from there it works and that's why i did a whole breakdown of how like georgia Texas and Florida and California are cheating the system if this is true. Maryland as well. If we're talking about talent per capita. Maryland, I believe, is like top five. Georgia's number one, of course. You know how we do. But when we're talking about NFL talent per person, Maryland's up there in the top five. So actually, the Maryland, Maryland, DMV, Baltimore, Ravens, and Washington Commanders have a strong advantage over a lot of teams in the NFL right now. I mean, just imagine being a random team like the Denver Broncos, like what does your local pro day look like? Because I highly doubt it's as talented as the local pro day that the Washington Commanders had in Ashburn, man. I highly doubt it. So continuing with the list, you also have cornerback Josh Wallace from Michigan. You have cornerback A.J. Woods from Pittsburgh. You have safety Bo Braid from Maryland. You have safety Jordan Tolles from Morgan State. A hey, shout out to Morgan State. 
Um, and then you have defensive end Darian Brokenburg, I believe, from Howard. Shouts out Howard. Defensive end John Morgan from Arkansas. You have defensive end Traymon Morris Brash from Central Florida. Defensive end Ayabi Oki Anoma, I believe, from Charlotte. Defensive tackle Jamri Chroma from James Madison. Linebacker Lee Cobb good boy I'm struggling with these names from Western Virginia running back Killian Robinson from Texas guard Darian Dalcourt from Alabama tackle Gottlieb Ayize from Maryland I, yo I hey man DMV y'all need to help me with these names man I'm not used to these types of names in Atlanta dog I don't know where these are coming from tackle Anim Dankwa from Howard tackle Doug Nestor from West Virginia tackle Walter Roos from Oklahoma you have quarterback Talu Ta Talia Ta Talia however you pronounce it that guy that transferred to Maryland Talia Tagovanoa you know uh, Tua's brother over there from Maryland um, you have wide receiver Jalen Coker from Holy Cross and wide receiver Jashawn Jones from Maryland so that's your local pro day full list right there very noteworthy also because like Howard offensive tackle and them Dankwa apparently reportedly had dinner with Washington during the pre-draft process so that's a guy that you really need to keep an eye on right there Dankwa was a participant in Washington's local pro day and is a projected seventh round pick and potentially a priority undrafted free agent similar to how who mason cole was last year for us where it got to a point where we were competing with other nfl teams to win over mason cole in technically to sign him as an undrafted free agent that's why i always say it's better to be an undrafted free agent than to get drafted in like the sixth especially the seventh round i prefer to be an undrafted free agent over going in the seventh round any day of ever because man i'm telling you that seventh round you don't get to choose your team but if you're an undrafted free agent especially a priority undrafted free agent you literally have teams lining up and you're like okay okay i like you for that i like you for that i'm gonna go here i'm gonna choose you not you choose me so hey man definitely keep that in mind if it that, way better to be an undrafted free agent than a seventh round pick especially but maybe even a sixth round pick as well so i'm pretty sure nim dank was hoping that he goes undrafted unless he goes fifth round or higher and from that list of the guys that we had at the local pro day, another guy that's a big standout from that list is wide receiver Jalen Coker. Because even Steve Smith Sr., senior on his youtube channel talked about how underrated he is and just to go back just to let you know Jalen coker is from sterling virginia and he went to holy cross but again steve smith senior has like his own youtube channel where he does film breakdowns on a lot of these draft prospects especially like the wide receiver specifically and he only talks about some of the most notable notable ones who's great at what and things like that then he has his own like list of his top wide receivers he took time out of his day to talk about Jalen coker he didn't get to every wide receiver in his draft class he made sure he talked about him steve S smith senior said that he loves Jalen's route running and how he has no wasted movement. That's the exact quote he said. And the fact that he lines up everywhere, inside, outside, all of that. And Steve Smith also reportedly acknowledged how bad his quarterback was and basically throwing him the ball extra late at times and things like that, like way after he was open and all of that type of stuff. And he also noted that the guy's a hands catcher and we love hands catchers. Even though Terry McLaurin turned out to be a great receiver, he's not a hands catcher. We prefer hand catchers. Also, another standout is, of course, the Maryland quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa's brother, Talia. I believe that's how you pronounce Tu Tu Tualia, however you pronounce that. Of course, Miami Dolphins. Tua Tagovailoa's brother and this is the second time Talia has actually been linked to the Washington Commanders so maybe there's some real interest there to bring him in as as an unlike an undrafted free agent to kind of compete for the backup quarterback room right now that we have already filled up after we draft the guy second overall we already have four quarterbacks maybe they bring in Tua Tagovailoa's brother to become the fifth quarterback because he did show flashes he has shown flashes now he's very small he's undersized but he showed flashes also I do want to point out the fact that three HBCU prospects were invited to the local pro day. And I, that's why I wanted to make sure I shouted out Howard defensive end, Darian Brokenberg, Howard defensive tackle, and Neem Dankwa, and Morgan State safety, Jordan Tolls. Shouts out to them. I wanted to make sure I dedicated at least a few seconds to acknowledging the fact that we had three HBCU athletes there at that local pro day. And I hope they made a strong enough impression to potentially get brought in here at least as an undrafted free agent also moving on according to various sources again shouts out to my boy ken johannison the commanders have a strong interest in linebacker richard jibinor out of troy i hope that's how you pronounce his last name who we 
he is a late round prospect or maybe even potentially an undrafted free agent target so hey be on the lookout for that boy richard over there he's from nigeria he played for troy he's six foot one 234 pounds seen as like an outside linebacker edge rusher type of guy like a no hand in the dirt rushing off of the edge way wide type of guy and i mean i guess if you want to do like a real deep dive into him the 33rd team did like his strengths and weaknesses they said strengths explosive athlete quick decisive first step and hot aggressive motor weaknesses edge discipline you can coach that stoutness you can i mean bulk up a little bit and then counter moves you can coach that as well so he has some traits you can't teach and then the things that he's struggling with so far are things that you can teach so maybe this is a guy again maybe we bring him in as a undrafted free agent because right now mddb has him ranked 313th and draft buzz has him ranked 324 so this is a guy that you may be able to bring in as an undrafted free agent maybe he's a steal that we can you know maybe two three years from now people are like where did this freak athlete come from type of thing so be on the lookout for that moving on tcu tackle brandon coleman also had a top 30 visit not only with the commanders like i already told y'all but with the charges as well he's six foot five 313 pounds and is expected to be a top 75 pick because he's starting to fly up people boards lately and things like that so just to let you know also the commanders went to illinois defensive tackles johnny newton's pro day along with a lot of other teams like a lot of people are saying that he may be a first round pick so i highly 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 doubt that we use a first round pick on him and i don't think he's gonna make it to the second round but just to let you know there's that right there also there's a lot of buzz lately for western michigan edge marshawn Nealon, who i already told you about he was one of the busiest pre-draft guys out there doing it he visited the texans vikings buccaneers panthers colts and the commanders all part of a 16 team visit schedule and a lot of people are seeing him as potentially like a late first, early second round type of guy. So be on the lookout for him. And then also Iowa tight end Eric All, of course, had a top 30 visit with us, but also the 49ers and several other teams. He's visited with the Dolphins, the Browns, the Vikings. So I'm just giving y'all some of these guys just kind of running through them because these are guys that have interest league wide. Other teams are looking at them as well. Even though the commanders brought them in for top 30 visits, we're not the only team interested in these guys. But I just wanted to give you the heads up that, hey, these are some random prospects that maybe a lot of people aren't paying attention to that the commanders are interested in, but other teams are interested as well. And also, big, big news. Don't say that you have not been warned, and maybe some people have been watching this video this long just to get to this part, but I wanted to make sure we talked about the top 30 visits and stuff first. But it looks like the commanders may be trying to find a new franchise punter now of course i don't want people to think that this is because Tressway wears the number five and it looks like we're potentially going to draft number five wearing Jaden daniels quarterback out of lsu but adam peters seems to want to put his stamp on this organization immediately in every way possible completely purge this roster and everybody that's a notable contributor to this team special teams offense or defense is going to be a guy that he brought in draft the free agency and not somebody that just happened to stay around and linger from the previous regime around rivera and those guys just to let you know his name is austin mcnamara and before we even get into who he is i just want to let you know shouts out to chris cooley because he brings up a solid point i like tressway just to let you know i'm higher on tressway than chris cooley is but he brings up some solid points in his tweet where he said way has been well below average for two years now but be careful some people don't like the idea of moving on from him so tread lightly if you talk about trust way that's basically he was warning he said cutting trust way would save 3.1 million dollars in cap space weighs 2023 stats and rankings among 33 punters he was 25th in yards per attempt 16th in hang time average and 31st in punting grade from pro football focus and also Wade currently has the fourth highest cap hit among punters out of the entire nfl in this 2024 upcoming season and just a heads up again i'm higher on tressway than chris cooley is but he, those are some solid points and just to let you know shouts out to ken jail hannison for letting us know this the commanders have met with mick namara several times informally during this pre-draft process so there's clear interest right there they met with them at the hula bowl they made sure they went out of his way out their way at the hula bowl to make sure they talked to him on the side same thing at the senior bowl and then also they went to texas tech's 
pro day and i'm i mean i'm not gonna sit here and say that they went literally for austin mcnamara but mate but hey they were at that texas tech pro day and made sure they talked to him there and shouts out to bnb football because for some reason they did a list of the top punters that are coming out of this draft they have a whole ranking and everything crazy i appreciate them but i'm letting you know now couldn't be me i'm not about to go around here and watch enough tape on punters in this draft process to come out with a punters ranking list i'm just let you know that right now but shouts out to them for carrying it because you got it man hey salute to bnb football either way though they have Austin McNamara as the second best punter available in this draft, only behind Tory Taylor of Iowa. And they also provided a good explanation. First of all, he's 6'4", 195 pounds. And if you notice, according to their list, the top four punters are all six foot four or taller. It's I didn't know that was a thing, um, but they do a good job of like breaking down, like like explaining who he is. And they also have some stats and some rankings. So when they did their breakdown of Austin McNamara, they said he has a powerful leg with a vicious punting motion. He kicks the ball with aggression, but has still shown excellent placement on his kicks. Again, I'm not about to sit here and watch punter film. So I'm gonna just take their word for it right now. I'm just giving you all the heads up that this is not Rico of Street Scores thoughts. This is being B football shouts out to them because i'm not about to watch enough punter tape to do this he's improved his mechanics over the five year career as a starter and has done a nice job of converting his distance in the hang time mcnamara has good size of six foot four and doesn't slow him down in his punting motion i i wouldn't even know to look for that I, I didn't even know height would affect how you punt i just this is not my thing mcnamara has shown in the past that he could average an impressive yard per punt number 48.2 in 2021 but has instead transitioned into power and his power into elite hang time mcnamara only return allowed returns on 18 percent of his punts this past season by far the best percentage for any punter averaging over 45 yards per punt so statistically he's the best punter in this draft class basically so he was 46.3 yards per punt which is slightly less than the tory taylor guy before him he had 24 inside the 20 yard line which is slightly less than the guy before him in the list as well he has seven touchbacks the exact same amount as tory taylor had again the guy that's ranked number one on this punting list he had 49.1 percent of fair catches forced, so that's way better than tory taylor's his longest is 59 which is eight yards shorter than tory taylor's and then he had his 81.8 percent of his punts were unreturnable which is way better than tory taylor so again statistically it sounds like austin is the guy I'm not exactly sure why they feel like tory taylor's the number one punter but if anything austin mcnamara based on what they're saying in the stats it sounds like tory taylor's maybe 1a and austin's 1b so just again big heads up they're probably replacing tressway this season or even if they don't replace replace tressway just yet maybe tressway starts for you but maybe they bring in this austin guys and draft the free agent and then let him compete during the offseason training camp and things like that preseason see how he does and then we'll go from there also nikki javala before we get up out of here brings up a great point her exact tweet was pre-draft 2023 Josh Harris agreed to buy the Commanders. The team declined Chase Young's fifth-year option and multiple federal and NFL-led investigations into the team and Dan Snyder continued. Pre-draft 2024, mass hysteria over top golf and a thinking emoji. We have come so far, and I completely agree. That is why all of this Jaden Daniels drama doesn't bother me at all. First of all, the draft starts with us. Let's start there. Everybody knows Caleb Williams is going to the Bears, point-blank period, number one overall. So all of the media, national media people, all of those guys are really using us to generate clicks and views right now. Because also, all of this drama is, I want to point out the fact that this is coming not from a prospect at all. Not like not from like the commander side of things, but from the national media and some agents. There is zero drama actually coming from the commander's organization right now. Literally zero. That's why I don't see why... I don't, I don't get it when I see like in the comments on Twitter and things like that about how the commanders are basically the same old, same old we've always been. I feel like that's completely wrong. This has nothing to do with Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, or Josh Harris, in my opinion. This is all from the national media side of things and some agents. We're not even talking about Jaden Daniels himself. 
And again, like I already said, the national media is going to create drama even when there isn't any right now because the draft literally starts with us. We have a target on our back as simple as that. We got They're trying to keep things interesting leading up to this draft that's about to go down on Thursday. We just happen to be the team that's picked just simply because the draft literally starts with us. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinion video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because again i'm gonna keep y'all updated on everything i really wanted to make sure i got in at least two three videos today but i wasn't able to but make sure you go check out that amarius mims film session that technically came out early this morning so i kind of did but not really i was trying to make at least two three more after i woke up so make sure you just stay tuned make sure you go watch everything i'm gonna keep y'all updated on everything going on with the quarterbacks i'm working on not only my own two final mock drafts one where i I'm going to do what I want to do, and, what, and then I'm going to do another one where I predict what's actually going to happen. Not what I would do, but what I think the commanders will do. And then I'm also working on putting together, I'm going to look everywhere on the internet to see what everybody is selecting for us right now, number two overall, just to give you an idea of where the national media is with as far as where the commanders are going in the draft. And if any of those mock drafts go beyond the first round, I'll give you those picks as well. So, and of course, like maybe some trade up for tackles, things like that. I'm working on more film sessions before the draft comes and again i will be live streaming the entire draft process but of, but of course let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video all of the draft prospects we discussed are any of these guys really notable to you are any of these guys that we talked about in this video guys that you really really want the commanders to get how do you feel about this whole Tressway situation do you feel like the commander should move on from Tressway and bring in a new punter immediately let me know how you feel about everything the local pro day shouts out to the commanders for bringing in three hbcu students as well that's much love there really appreciate y'all for that and of course do not not leave this video without leaving a like i really appreciate it catch y'all later i'm out